Hello and welcome to Classic Judging by the Cover, the series with nostalgia stuck right up its nostrils, where we'll be judging Chip's Challenge by the Cover. You know, in the era before near-photorealistic graphics, where games would be routinely advertised with hand-painted classic movie poster-style art, where lovingly coloured reproductions of Harrison Ford in his prime are used to represent in-game characters that could more honestly have been represented by a small handful of Lego, it's refreshing to see such a brutally honest approach. It's a rather faithful adaptation of one of the in-game levels, realised in varnished wood and Christmas cracker toys, artfully lit from above like it's a prize on Mastermind. Very honest. Ugly as all bollocks, but honest. Well, they're not entirely transparent with regards to the theme of the game. What, so it's a game where green insect monsters compete at dodgeball with small representations of the Death Star, and where someone threw a birthday party for a kite that ended in disaster because only one guest showed up and it was the kite's evil twin from the Negaverse. And I've no idea what's going on back there. I've seen Bigfoot sightings with better quality images. Looks like two chicken nugget children from McDonald Land on the run from the law. The image is buttressed at its very foot by what is presumably our hero as he attempts to use a key. Or at least one hopes to god it's a key. Funny shade of blue if it isn't. And incidentally, this is why you don't urinate into liquid nitrogen canisters. It's a blue key being used on a yellow door, but give him a moment, trial and error will help him eventually figure this out. Let's leave him to his cognitive process and take a look at the back of the box in which we find a beautiful woman with a pair of glasses rather awkwardly photoshopped on, and the man who presumably did the photoshopping, who either has hair the same colour as the background or is missing a distressingly large portion of his skull. I like the classy Criterion Collection sort of vibe the top of the image logos are going for, with its gold trim and serifed fonts, only for it all to be completely abandoned at the blurb with a dirty great sans serif S at the start, like a huge, overweight cleaning lady scoffing all the canapes at a posh society dinner. Strategy game players of all ages will love the puzzle-solving challenges facing Chip, as he must conquer 144 game levels game levels, bit redundant that, in order to join Woman Melinda's exclusive computer organisation club, the Bitbusters. Blimey, this blurb's long, better get through it fast. Every level of Chip's Challenge represents a unique timed one-player puzzle. Solving a level invariably involves... Bit sarcastic for a blurb. Invariably involves collecting microchips. Oh, what variety. With available tools such as keys, magnets, shields and cleats, doors, traps... As each level is solved, you are led into the next, slightly more difficult level. Thank you, I know what a video game is. Blimey, is this the blurb or the 24-page script treatment? Skipping on a bit, the levels get progressively more formidable- What the fuck? You just said that, you silly blurb! With 144 levels, even the most skilled strategy game players will be absorbed by Chip's challenge for countless hours. Yeah, I suppose zero is technically countless. But now we're repeating the shit we were saying in the very first paragraph. Blimey! If this blurb gets any more redundant, it'll turn into a Sheffield coal miner. But let's move on now to the European box art, where, oh dear, we're back in lovingly painted dishonesty town. The class has also dropped a few notches, hence the background switching to imitation marble reminiscent of a bathroom counter in a prefab apartment. The eponymous Chip and the heavenly body at the centre of his personal friend zone orbit have been recast as the woman with the amazing trapezoidal haircut and Brendan Fraser. It's the standard Hollywood Daniel Jackson Billy from Power Rangers approach where they turn a generically handsome man into a huge nerd by giving them glasses, an unflattering hairdo and an adult-sized version of a toddler's outfit. Compare that to the huge nerd on the previous image, who despite having none of those stereotypical trappings, undoubtedly is a huge nerd, because they've got that unmistakable Zodiac Killer look on their face that only the truly socially awkward can produce. Anyway, it now falls for us to decipher the story behind Brendan Fraser's circumstances in the main image, and the best explanation I can think of is that he's being fucked with. Oh, you know what would really impress me, the lady in the top left must have said to him one day, a man who would dress up like a reject Mario brother and go sit on the floor of the unisex bathroom with their legs splayed apart in a display of sexual wantonness. 
Oh, and you know what would really spill a pint of hot lady jizz down my inner thighs is if they were holding an old-fashioned key in a manner that implies they have no idea what a key is or how they work. But I guess there are no more men with such traditional ideas according, are there? So dutifully Chip took up position, but after a few minutes of waiting he was attacked by a cross between a Roomba and a staple remover. God damn it, Tweaky, stop ruining this for me! He cries as he throws out an arm to regain his balance. And then, just to complete the prank, his erstwhile love interest chucks a number of IEDs into the room and releases a pair of monstrous dentures. Yes, I suppose it is going a bit beyond a joke at that point, but who can truly understand the manipulative mind games of a woman who cuts her hair with a lawn edger?